What are you, what are you missing? Welcome to MCBC, the podcast for April the 22nd, 2024, uh, joined by my fellow comrades and ministry leader, Sandy Shrey. Hello. Welcome, Sandy. And joined by one of our uh, congregants, uh, mentors, wives, Miss Esther Hamilton. Hello. Ooh. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we should do that little clapping uh, sound on there. You know how to do that? <laughs> Our producer. <laughs> oh, oh. Jesus. He never used these. You use it. There it is. Yeah, we can't hear it, but it did it, Miss Esther. They just clapped for hopefully. you. So hopefully, if it wasn't a, like, boo, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> So, yes, yeah, so we are beginning tonight uh, a new segment on, one, on our podcast we want to call Legacy Talks. Uh, we had a little brief intro on Sunday in our worship service where we had a member um, break down some history from Mount Zion, our church, from his family, his wife's family, uh, different things like that. And so what we want to do with Miss Esther uh, is just find out, get to know her. Uh, we know her, I know her probably the best in the room. Um, and I don't even know her that well, and I know her better than, <laughs> than you guys. So we get to know her, uh, just ask some questions, uh, conversate about walking with God and living life and, and how those different things impact up until this day. And so, Miss Esther, will you just kind of give us just a brief uh, intro? Uh, who are we? Where are we from? Well, I'm the um, second of nine children to Curtis and Jeanette Eisler. So I think that's important because um, when you come from a somewhat large family, it tends to mold you in ways that you're not even aware of. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's important. And I think the next thing that's uh, important is that I love the Lord. I am a believer, and I try very hard to live each day with that foremost, mm -hmm. not only in my mind, but in my behaviors, mm -hmm. too. Um, I enjoy people, and because you do enjoy people, you tend to talk a lot. <laughs> but I... <laughs> I hope to temper that with praying more, <laughs> so it, it, it's okay. Yeah. I tried not talking, and it just didn't work. <laughs> uh, it was almost like being disobedient. Yes. Um, I'm from a, a small town in, in compared to other cities and other places and compared to here in Georgia, mm -hmm. uh, Niagara Falls, New York. And um, I lived there my whole life, and I never had any intentions of leaving until uh, my husband started shoveling snow when he shouldn't. <laughs> and so I said, well, I need to go someplace where there's no snow. <laughs> and uh, we have a daughter here, and uh, this is where we wound up. Yes. Um, I have a sister uh, who was visiting me. I was going through some health issues, and uh, she's famous for looking things up online. And she found this church mm. and another church. And she said, well, that one's right up the street from me. <laughs> and so we attended. Mm -hmm. We came to this church uh, the first day, and... I won't call last names, but Paula mm -hmm. directed us here, uh, showed us when we got on campus, and we've been here ever since. And uh, the word is preached, and uh, our philosophy is simple. If the word is being preached, don't run away, because you'll find yourself wherever you go. Mm. So stay where the word is, <laughs> and you'll be all right. I think, uh, thank you. I think along the way tonight, we're going to hear some little uh, sayings that you could probably write down and use later in life. Uh, <laughs> that's one of them. Wherever you go, there you can find yourself. There you are, right mm. there. Um, I agree. So what, uh, nine children? Yes. You're second to the youngest? Oldest. 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 Okay, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, what? <laughs> I have three younger brothers, or two younger brothers and younger sisters, so three younger siblings. So mm -hmm. I know on the small scale, that exp like what you learned in that, but what is it like around nine? That that scene. I know four was chaotic for my parents. Um, <laughs> oh, for your parents. Yeah, oh, I well, thought, we I were having a good time. <laughs> yeah, yes, right, right, right. I thought you were gonna say for the children. No. Well, um, I think one of the things that you learn uh, in a positive way is that you learn that people are different. Yeah. Even your siblings are different. You learn to stick together and and to to uh, support one another. Mm -hmm. But you also know that you're different. And in order to uh, be a cohesive unit as a family, you have to learn to adapt to those differences. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it isn't just because I was second oldest that I could be in charge, mm -hmm. you know. It, it didn't work that way. So you had, uh, in the children, nine different personalities, basically, mm -hmm. and you had to adapt to that. Different mm -hmm. personalities, different uh, uh, emotions, uh, way of expressing themselves, 
um, abilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, our family is unique in that it, it runs the gamut from those who are definitely gifted to those who had special needs. Mm -hmm. And so special needs was a term that came up later in life, but for most of the individuals our age, you took care of family. Yeah. It, it was, there was no such thing as, okay, well, they have to go here or go there. And so, you know, mm -hmm. you learn a lot. You mm -hmm. learn to share, mm -hmm. you learn to love. And I can go on and on. All, all qualities that you apply to church life and Jesus. Absolutely. Just like mm. Because they came from him. Yeah. They came from him. You just didn't do this by yourself. Wake up one morning <laughs> and say, I love you, Keithy. You know, <laughs> who is the brother under me? <laughs> you know, but it was, it was him. And my parents... Uh, because they knew the Lord uh, mm -hmm. and lived uh, a life. Uh, many, many times uh, my siblings and I will say we are blessed beyond measure. And we did mm -hmm. not know how blessed we were until mm -hmm. we were adults growing up yeah. and realized. I thought everybody called their mother every day. <laughs> I mean, I'd, yeah, I'd, 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 I, you know, I just, well, why wouldn't you? You know, that's yeah. what I would say, especially as you got older and your parents got older. You still respected them when, when I was older and got married, even when I was in school. When I went to their house, I would knock on the door because that's their home. I'm no longer there. So you, even though you're their child, mm -hmm. and they'll remind you of that, you know, <laughs> you don't go barging into their home, yeah. you know. So different little things. I love that. Uh, our upbringing was, uh, was vastly different uh, growing up in church as you, as you mm -hmm. did. Um, parents, uh, long-time believers, like they just your whole life, that's what it was. Just, yeah, basically. Yeah, just, mm -hmm. And you went to Sunday school, you went to oh, church, yes. you went mm -hmm. to Wednesday mm -hmm. night, you mm -hmm. went to... Mm -hmm. well, we were, we, we were didn't have to go out to go. Just like this couch here. The lady sat on the couch and we sat on the floor. Uh, and that was how prayer meeting was. Oh, I love it. And you would be there every Saturday. There was no, I had to go here, I had to go there. <laughs> you had to go to prayer meeting. And so it was just natural yeah. for us. Yeah. And it wasn't that my parents uh, forced us to do anything, but they lived a life that you wanted to be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, involved in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We it, weren't perfect by no means. Of course. You know? Of course. Um, yeah, Sandy? That's cool. Yeah. Um, so what you're bringing was in church, right? You said that uh, when we had the Easter thing, like you went to a lot of yeah, church growing up? Yeah, I did, but not not my whole immediate family are believers. Okay. Like my parents, I would say, are not believers. Mm -hmm. um, they don't religiously go to church. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom goes to like a Seventh-day Adventist mm -hmm. church, so mm -hmm. it's not the same yeah. belief mm -hmm. as I have, but... Um, I do come from a big family as well, okay. so I can relate yes. to mm -hmm. like what you're talking about with the whole family dynamics. And my mom was actually one of eight, two, okay. so big family. <laughs> um, so I definitely can relate to what you're saying about learning from your siblings mm -hmm. and your, your parents and your mm -hmm. aunties and your uncles <laughs> and all of that. But the whole church, we didn't really yeah. connect with that. Well, my father was an only child. And somewhere along the line, we think he just wanted some more siblings, you know, <laughs> and he just had us. But, uh, yeah, he was, an only, he was an only child. And the, I grew up in um, a situation where I, you all might have heard of it, but you might be too young to know, the five-day Bible clubs that they used to have on the porches. Mm. Uh, yeah, no, I know. No, ma'am, I, no, no. I know. I know you don't. <laughs> no. But it's all right. But, um, we need to bring that back, though, because you tell Oh, that yes, birds, so that's right. That you, you, you know, they would go through the neighborhood and, you know, ask for volunteers. And if you knew the Lord, then you would volunteer your porch. And every day from, like, for, like, a two-week period, you'd uh -huh. have a Bible club on your porch from okay. 10 to, oh, you know, 12 or something cool. like that. And then, you know, you, you should know something about child evangelism. You may have heard that mm -hmm. term. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was, an, again, another ministry uh, where they would come into your neighborhood and pick you up and take you to a, a local church. So mm -hmm. we were involved in, in all those things. And uh, my mother, and that's why I think we're so mission-minded, uh, was mission-minded. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think my mother traveled 200 miles out of the state, you know, except for <laughs> vacations or something. But uh, she had a love for yeah. uh, those, and she would minister, you know. It was nothing. Uh, a large family, you know, you, you really, if you get a second help, and that's kind of mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. But it was nothing for her to say, well, somebody's coming over for dinner, or mm -hmm. we have to supply to somebody mm -hmm. else. Okay. Mm -hmm. What was your, what did your father, what did it do to take care of what did my father take care of? Well, no, I'm saying, I know I'm saying, what did he do to take care of Oh, you? oh, <laughs> well, well, well my father is very, it's, uh, 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 it's, it's kind of special. He took 
what you call correspondence courses mm -hmm. for years. Mm -hmm. he, he worked in a factory, mm -hmm. but he wanted to be an engineer. And uh, if you look at me, you know that schools weren't necessarily available to <laughs> us for those things. And yeah. so he took correspondence courses. And he was successful in passing those courses. Mm -hmm. And he finally wound up being an engineer, an electrical engineer. And so he went from there, because while he was working on the correspondence courses, he was doing construction. He worked as a janitor in schools. And his, of course, his name was Eisler, but they called him Ike. And he would help many children. Uh, in his education, he had to learn Latin. Mm -hmm. So for some reason, <laughs> he thought that we would just be dying to learn it, too. <laughs> but we weren't dying to learn it, but we had to learn it. You okay. see? And he was great at uh, math. And mm. so he would, um, he would make sure we mm -hmm. knew math and the concepts. So he was very involved in our education and work, making us understand the value of mm -hmm. work, the mm. value of work, good work. Mm. And so, uh, and, and, and you also, excuse me for all you who don't believe in it, but he did believe in giving you a spanking, as did my mother. <laughs> right. And if you did something wrong, my mother didn't have any problems spanking you mm -hmm. or chastising you. Mm -hmm. But then when he came home, her name was Jeanette. He called her Nettie. He'd say, Nettie, how was your day? <laughs> and if she said, well, that was all right. <laughs> but if she called your name after that, <laughs> you were going to get another punishment, which is usually another little spanking. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Sandy, but it was okay. <laughs> because you didn't get the spanking for the same thing. You got the spanking for upsetting his wife. Oh. <laughs> See, so that put a understanding in, you know, your yes. life that... Um, mm -hmm. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I so. love that. So you briefly mentioned, uh, what time frame are we talking about? Because you said it wasn't available, that things weren't available to me at that time. That was around what year? What? Well, I graduated high school in 64. Okay, so very uh, trying times in our country. Yes, like, exactly. Yes. I'm 40, and I was born in 46. I mean, I'm 77. You can do the math. Uh, and, and that's another thing. I don't mind saying my age because it's all from the Lord. I love it. So, you know, what's the alternative, you know? <laughs> I want to live to be 100 if I'm in my right mind and I'm, you know, uh -huh. not a burden to anybody. Yes. But it's the only thing, I was just talking to the ladies about this today, it's the only thing that if I lose, I win. Because if I don't live, I'm going to heaven. Yeah. So how do you lose that? You know? I love that. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't lose. Oh, that's that one. Yeah, you get those. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> write these things yeah, down. Yeah, it's yeah. good yeah. stuff. Uh -huh. So uh, what was Niagara Falls um, in that time? Because I remember... Oh, it was an industrial. Like, industrial, yeah. okay. Oh, many, many industries. Uh, you, you might remember learning about Love Canal. But that's where all that chemical was and leached into the ground and mm. people were dying and so on mm. and so forth. And it was a, a chemical town because we were right on the river, the mm -hmm. Niagara River, and we had all that power. And, of course, we were dumping stuff. I mean, yeah. the DuPonts of the world, not me, the carborundums <laughs> of the world, you know. <laughs> and they were dumping things into the water, which weren't nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, so once, uh, let's call it the EPA and everybody else got wind of it and decided to stop it, well, the town just about died, uh, dried up. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's still a tourist attraction because the falls are there. And, uh, you know, it, it's a very nice place to go, both sides. Yes. Mm -hmm. We've mm -hmm. been there um, twice. Yes. I've been mm -hmm. there twice, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, and we've served uh, the church there. Yeah. Uh, Calvary. Grace, Cal Grace, Grace Calvary, Calvary Church, yes. 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 Um, um, it's so uh, how long were you at Grace Calvary? Oh, my whole life. After, whole after life. child evangelism and, you know, uh, the, the porch churches, yeah. yeah. Our parents, my parents, and my husband's mother, uh, an aunt, and another lady established that church. Okay. They prayed. The ladies prayed. Now, you, 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 you don't. The Bible tells you men, you know, to take care of your wives and 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 to be faithful and, and true to them because a praying wife can do a lot. You mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. And so those ladies got together and they prayed for that church. They prayed for the building. The church was a sale. And who had money? We didn't have no money. <laughs> and so uh, they prayed, and that church came into fruition. Mm. And because of that, they named it Grace Calvary. You know, there was mm -hmm. Grace at Calvary, mm -hmm. and so they named it Grace Calvary. And it's still standing today yeah. and serving. Yes. And serving. Yeah. Well, we've been there. Uh, we did uh, revival, I guess is the word yes. that we would use mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. Preaching in the park. Um, 
Sandy, they had me go, and I was the youth pastor at the time, and there's a basketball court there, and there's a million young kids <laughs> playing basketball, and here I am, Russell, in Niagara Falls. Uh -oh. <laughs> it was like, if, so everything Esther told you about, like, uh, the way her skin portrayed her at a certain time in her life, picture the opposite me standing in front of these Absolutely. young men. Um, and I was not shaken by it, because I've just come from Mount Zion, where mm, this right. is where we are, so I'm mm -hmm. totally okay with who God made me, uh, but... It was one of those moments where I'm like, ooh, okay, here we go. I talk in front of <laughs> basketball players all the time, but not strangers or not kids that were, like, yeah. at a park just playing. And here mm -hmm. comes this random guy going, hey, can I talk to you about Jesus real quick? Uh, they were very kind, though. And that was a really uh, – mm -hmm. that was a huge moment in my life, mm -hmm. like that whole trip, just watching everyone just go there and serve and be and then meeting all your church members and, and people that were more mm -hmm. like family members. Yes, because, you know, small uh, – a lot of times people uh, – get lost by choice if they choose mm -hmm. in mega churches because mm -hmm. nobody's going to bother them mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and, and you don't have to serve but in a small church you have to do everything you have to be a custodian you have to be the shopper you have mm -hmm. to spend your money right you have to watch right. the children and so on and so forth and so you you get a chance to serve um a lot of times people make the mistake of going to a church and somebody will say oh you work in a bank? Well, you could be a good treasurer. Well, you know, if God didn't call you to be the treasurer, you, you, you know, you, you're, not, you're not supposed right. to do that. So in a small church, it isn't so much a title as how you serve. And mm -hmm. that's what it, sh to I me, should it. be about, how you yeah. serve. How yeah. You, serve. you could get that sense the whole time we were there very uh servant minded just mm -hmm. everyone there that served us that sounds like i'm cheesy but i didn't mean to say it that way but they were the uh, hospitality driving mm -hmm. everything involved mm -hmm. was a really yeah, cool yeah, yeah. thing um and so how would you um so going from niagara falls early 60s where it was rough uh coming up in a big family where you're learning different personalities mom and dad are obviously good parents that are trying to work and raise the family the right way at what part did you know that you met jesus in that journey and well um that's easy you know when uh, this is for our uh, producer here too to keep in mind when you go off to college <laughs> for the first year when you come back thanksgiving you know everything oh, okay <laughs> oh yes you do you wonder how you put up with these people who just didn't have so a naive. sense of yeah yes. that's right that's right that's right uh and i'm sure you went through that was, when your daughter came home <laughs> to a degree uh, the, uh it's a sense of well what have you all been doing <laughs> you, you you have no idea what life is about you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and uh so i came home uh, that way yeah and i uh, my brother uh russell uh, who had a stuttering, you know, mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. And he was telling, now, f don't forget, I've been to the five-day clubs, you know, yeah. and I know all about Jesus and everything, but yeah. he takes it upon himself to ask me if I'm saved, if I know the Lord, and so on and so forth. And we were in the kitchen, and my mother was cooking and everything, and I would say, oh, that's so sweet, it's so nice that you know the salvation plan, blah, 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 <laughs> blah, blah. And uh, I went upstairs to go to bed. Mm -hmm. But when I went upstairs to lay down, I had this dream, and everybody in my house was going to heaven, mm -hmm. and I was trying to reach for my mother's leg, but it kept going through. Oh, no. Well, when I woke up, I went back downstairs and asked Russell, uh, what did you say? <laughs> you know, and uh, at that point, he's the one who actually led me to a conscious understanding of Christ and okay. so on and so forth. I had been to five-day clubs in school. We, you know, you got out on Tuesday to go to five-day clubs and bless her little heart, this little lady of your persuasion she would <laughs> she'd be talking to us about jesus and we were just like ah. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know of course yeah but uh i remember that was the first sense of the seriousness of it mm -hmm. but you know it, it was when i was in high school mm -hmm. and when i was in college uh my freshman year and so did that, mm -hmm. that that's an interesting time to for that to happen like did it change uh, when you went back like perspective on Oh, y yes, it did. Uh, somebody had this conversation uh, a while ago, or I heard it someplace, and people were saying, I think it was in Sunday school we were talking about it, that uh, sometimes people think they don't have a testimony or they weren't saved from something. We were all sinners. See, we're, we all are sinners, saved by grace. Mm -hmm. All right, so you are saved. You do have a testimony. It doesn't have to be, and I was on drugs, and I shot, and I killed. It doesn't have to be all that. It's that you didn't know Jesus. You were not perfect. Mm -hmm. you, you know, so... Yeah, we mentioned help. that on this podcast right here, like, because there are people who go to church here that have said that thing to me, like, oh, man, I don't really have a testimony. I don't yes, have, I'm you like, do. you actually have yes, a great one. Right. Like, God protected you from this That's and this right. He you. kept you mm -hmm. yes. when you didn't even know you were being kept. Yes. Yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, so, yes, it did, because when I went back to school, 
I had a different sense of wanting to accomplish things. Mm. It wasn't that you were just trying to do it for yourself mm -hmm. or, or just because they were giving A's. I had friends who used to tease me about, well, why do you feel you have to get A? Well, my thinking at that time, before mm -hmm. I knew the Lord, was they're giving out A's. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> yeah. They're giving them out. I might yeah, as well that's get right. One. Why should I yeah. get one? You know, yeah. especially when they give you a syllabus and tell you what it is. All right. So, but when I went back, I realized that I should be serving and working and loving for Christ mm -hmm. as I was doing it to Him. And you didn't. I didn't go back with that the next semester. Of course, yeah. You know, but, but uh, you yeah. grew into that, mm -hmm. and you grew into the love of Christ, mm. which is never ending. Mm -hmm. Oh, the never ending. Mm -hmm. it, it, it never ends, and you never cease from growing and wanting to bring others to that point mm -hmm. of, of not being worried about situations, mm. of not being, you know, because worry has a lot of words. Oh, I'm not worried, I'm just concerned. I'm <laughs> not worried, I'm just thinking about, you know, but you think about it all the time, you know what I mean? So you want to teach others to be content mm. in what's up, the word says, in whatsoever state I find myself. Mm -hmm. And that's because Jesus never leaves us, he's always with us. Mm -hmm. That's his, because he said, cast it on me, you got a problem, cast it on me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, 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 that changed. And I had a new attitude also when I was in school about what the purpose of school was. Mm. See, I was going to school at first because I did not like that my father had to work construction work and he had to walk home in the snow because people wouldn't give him a ride home. Mm -hmm. So I was going to get him. Oh, yeah. See, I, yeah, I was yeah. going to get him. Vengeance. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah Vengeance it was mine, mine. I yeah. thought. You know, <laughs> it, and then I had to read that, say it to the Lord. <laughs> it wasn't mine. But in, in those ways, now, you didn't think of it as vengeance. You just yeah. thought about, well, I'm go I've That's been right. not going to do that to me. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. But then you began to realize, again, the mercy and the grace of God, the mm -hmm. goodness of God. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so. a lot of, uh, I think sometimes we experience this that in ministry, um, people are in survival mode from what they witnessed in their family and saw mm -hmm. and their experience and kind of like seeing your dad yes. go through that. Mm -hmm. and so you're like, no, I'm going to make it. Like, right. that's not going to mm -hmm. happen to me. And, right. and then we forget that we're not really controlling that. And then when we get over that, you see yeah. the way God has really controlled the whole thing and exactly. got you to that point. Yeah. yeah. And so once you, so you go back to school, not the next semester, but and what do you end up graduating and doing um, with that school? Well, I have a kind of a unique situation. Well, my yeah. life is unique because yeah. it's, you know, made by God. But the, in that I have all three of my degrees from the same institution. Okay. Oh, yeah. And I, I, so my first uh, degree was in speech pathology and audiology. And so within a year of that time, you could get your master's at, you know, at that time. So I went ahead and got the master's. Was right. that from growing up with your brother with the speech no, impairment? Or no, that was, just I, like a th that was just because I wanted to help people communicate. Okay. See, and so, you know, I did that. Don't Love forget, it. I was a talker when I was young. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, and then, you know, I figured, okay, well. I'm so good at it. I can help all these people <laughs> talk. <laughs> I, it took me a while to realize some people don't want to talk, you know. <laughs> and, you know, or like, you know, when you were in, don't let me forget my thought, but, but when, when you were in school and had to give book reports. Yeah. And, oh, some of the children, <laughs> some of the students, would they just would panic. <laughs> they just panic. Like they One time I told my girlfriend, I said, now, listen, you get up there and you get that re book report. Mm -hmm. You don't care whether they listen to you or not. The <laughs> teacher's going to give you the grade. Right. You know, don't <laughs> like, just forget them. And she looked at me like, is that what you do? I didn't have the heart to tell her, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't really care yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. what you do. I'm, I'm trying to let this teacher hear what I read yeah. the book and so on and so forth. But anyways, that was my... Um, um, uh, bachelor's and master's degree. Okay. And then um, I stopped and had a family and mm -hmm. worked. And when my children, uh, our children were in sixth and seventh grade, I went back to school mm -hmm. uh, for my doctorate. And I only went to school because I like learning. And I mm -hmm. figured, what well, if you're going to learn, you might as well get something for it. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. <laughs> Stop taking a course here and a course mm -hmm. there, put them together. Um, and so uh, I got that in elementary and special ed. And okay. You know, went on. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. um, there's some other stories about your schooling that we've I've learned of that I would not to share, but yes. there's some more interesting stories that go exactly. into her schooling and uh, <laughs> how it got taken care of that are really Absolutely. cool and uh, really good. So uh, you skipped, you did the schooling, so Anna had a little family, and then you moved on. But let's go back to that part. Okay. Right there. That little family. Uh, 
you met uh, Brother Donald? Yes. It was he a uh, high school sweetheart? Like oh, heavens for no. <laughs> the man was out of high school 13 years before I was even born. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> so uh, he, my husband is, is 13 years older yeah. than I am. And he um, was raised here down south in a little place yeah. called uh, Pigeon Creek, Alabama. Pigeon Creek, Alabama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now they have... Uh, joined with Greenville, so they don't sound okay. so country. Uh, Pigeon Creek, <laughs> and I went down there at my first time after we got married at 27, at age 27. The first time I had ever been down south. Okay. Because I, I knew it, it was, was not yeah. the place for me to grow right. up. Right. Okay. So leave that alone. So uh, I met him at my sister's wedding. Someone dropped out of the wedding, and so she needed another groomsman. And his mother and my mother were very good friends. Hmm. And so. Uh, his mother volunteered him. Now, Don, bless his heart, was not into weddings and <laughs> nice little <laughs> things. You know, he, uh, he, he, uh, he has an extensive education from what we would term the streets. <laughs> and so uh, he came, uh, he served in that capacity. He would do that for his mother, you know, for his friends. So he mm -hmm. did that. Well, I don't know what happened. There are a couple of things that are very humorous about that. <laughs> but we were at the wedding and we saw each other every day until the next April when we got married. And I'm going to tell you now, I, I, you know, because I'm just talking, so I don't really care. It's the yes. truth. I, I remember my sister said, ooh, ooh, could you like him? I said, this is what I said, y'all. <laughs> I said, oh, I'll give him a run for his money. <laughs> now, I, I never, I, it's not that I had a thousand dates, you know. Right, it was right. just an expression. That's right. And here comes God saying, yeah, you're going to give him a run, all right. <laughs> you already caught, you understand? <laughs> but, uh. Don, um, you know, I tell people, as much as I knew what love was, mm. I loved him. And I still love him. Mm -hmm. So I can't tell you, well, 13 years, well, he, well, did he graduate? Well, you have a college. I couldn't, all yeah. those things are worldly things. I, I don't try to address those. Mm -hmm. And if people are bold enough to ask me, I tell them to ask God. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, because I, I, I don't have an answer for mm -hmm. you. I just know I love the men. <laughs> and it's been uh, now, April 3rd, it was 52 years we've 50. been married. Amazing. 52 years. So. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, he was a soldier in the Army. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. He was yeah. in. Paratrooper. Was, yep, paratrooper, yeah, yeah. paratrooper, yeah. So. Well, we went across country on a vacation, and I was going to jump out the plane, and oh, it yeah. was a cloudy day that day. Yeah, <laughs> broke my heart. But, he, <laughs> and, and, and what, but, 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 Sandy, the thing was, after that, he told me he'd been praying since he heard about it. But he didn't tell me because he didn't want me to be mad all across the country. Oh. But he was praying. He said, you jump out that plane and hurt yourself, and I'm way over here. So <laughs> <laughs> I forgave him. And uh, I think, if my recollection is correctly, uh, two children? Yes. Two children, uh, yes. A son and a daughter. Son and a mm -hmm. daughter, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how far apart are they? Uh, just a year. Just a year Just apart. a year. Okay. Yeah, I, m my parents, uh, the, you know, uh, would take in other children and would adopt, you know, have mm. adopted and so uh, quite a, well, not quite a few, I won't say it, but uh, in our family, we have also adopted as their children. We've adopted mm -hmm. into our family. And so uh, I used to say they're, they're both children of the heart. And one's <laughs> ch a child of the womb. But they're both children of the heart. Mm -hmm. I love yeah, that. Yeah. I love that. And they mm -hmm. both have their own little families. And yeah, well, Donita doesn't have a family. Okay, so yeah, you're she, her little. Yeah, yeah she, she takes care of herself. Yeah, she takes care of herself and me and her daddy. <laughs> you know, it's, it's at that age now yes. where she, you know, I, I just don't stop saying anything. <laughs> awesome. Um, Sandy, what are your thoughts on any of this? I'm just rambling on. I'm just listening. You're just taking it all right. in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think one of the hardest things for Pastor Russell, uh, I'm, f I'm 46, which is always when I say I'm old, people like Miss Esther roll their eyes at me and tell me, you, you don't even know <laughs> what you're saying and all this. So I tried to stop saying that. But I'm, I'm at that point in my life where, like you said, my daughter is a freshman in college and uh, my son is a freshman in high school and uh, I've been the lead pastor for three years now. And so it's like... Uh, you get to a point where you feel like people think you know more than you know you know, mm. um, and you are uh, in situations where your, um, I guess your faith is not put to the test, but your your faith and ability to share it and, and, and encourage other people is being stretched to the limits at points. Mm -hmm. How, how I, in your life, um, knowing um, nine different relationships as brothers and sisters, uh, godly mother and parents growing up, but striving to like, uh, overcome the, the things of racial inequalities like fueling you on and then you meet Jesus and you're like, wait, it's way more bigger than this and I'm, I have a whole other passion now. How has that 
uh, helps you in uh, difficult times and in good times, just like along your whole journey, w that foundation, like what does it do? I, I think it's a, it's a long question, but the answer yes, is simple. Sorry, yes. No, no, don't be sorry because <laughs> I mean, it, it explains what the question is. I think the answer is that you have to realize that you're nothing, mm. that you don't have the answer even when you think you have <laughs> the answer. Mm -hmm. And when you think you have the answer, you're going to cause more havoc than what mm. it is. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, sometimes we spend time when we haven't reached a certain level yet, we spend time trying to figure the situation out, trying to give an answer, trying, instead of saying, I'll pray for you. Mm. or. I don't know that, but I'm willing to pray. We have to admit that we don't know. It's mm -hmm. all right to say we don't know. Mm -hmm. In a job situation that, you know, the, the majority of my life, whenever I've had people under me, the first thing I say to them is, you don't know everything, and I don't know all the situations that we're going to face. Mm -hmm. You feel confident when someone comes to the desk and say, well, I don't know, but I will research that mm -hmm. for you and mm -hmm. get back. That's what we as Christians should do. I don't know, mm -hmm. but I know a God who does. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the more you trust God, the shorter your prayers become. Mm. Because you're not telling God, well, such and such and such, and we well, you know he did this, and no, she did that, and it's not working. <laughs> you, you, you just stop. Stop. Yeah. You know? And so I think that what happens is, for me, I've learned that I have a lot of thoughts in my head. Lord, mm -hmm. have mercy, I have a lot of thoughts in my head. Mm -hmm. But I have to run them through the Lord, <laughs> and I have to have people run them for me through the yeah. Lord. Yeah, yeah. It, it helps to have people to run thoughts through. Yes, Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. several people like that in my life I will uh, send a text to and say, hey, can I say this? And they'll most of the time say no, <laughs> but at least I got to say it to them so I get it yes, off my chest. right, right, right. <laughs> um, can you think of or recollect like any time in your life that was like a, a, a major thing where you had to, like your faith was it, like you were, I, I'm in, God, this is you or it's not happening, like just anything. It could be job related. It could be a mom, husband, wife, all those things, just or all of it. Well, yeah, yeah I, I, see, that's what I mean. I, I believe it's all of it. All of it uh, is one. Yeah, yeah, well, you mentioned, you know, that you're older and you have children now, all mm -hmm. right, who are mm -hmm. you know, daughter in college. Up, yeah. And I remember uh, saying to uh, my son, our son, at 16, I said, well, now, you're 16. It's the first time you've been 16, and it's the first time that I've been the mother of a 16-year-old. So we're going to make mistakes, you know. Mm -hmm. Now I could have said that at 13, 14, 12, and everything else, mm -hmm. but at 16 he needed to hear that. And I said, but the reality of it is we're the ones as parents who are going to have the final say, mm -hmm. you understand? Now, when I said that, I didn't realize the seriousness of that. And I think, uh, if truth be told, I went through 10 years of, Lord, what are you doing? <laughs> Before he said, I'm doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And when I got that piece, you understand, I was able to look back and say, how foolish were you? Mm. The Lord was there all the time, but that was the journey my son had to take. Mm -hmm. And the journey I had to take and the journey everybody has to take, we can't, we can't judge each, everybody's journey, yeah. anybody's journey, because it's their journey from the Lord. One of the um, things we've been going over recently is a study about Lord Changed My Attitude on Wednesday nights. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he said in the first week, it was replace a complaining attitude. But he s was saying... Uh, whatever your thing is, like whatever God has you going through, mm -hmm. whether it's a 16-year-old or mm -hmm. a parent of a 16-year-old or whatnot, um, he was like, that is the thing that God is using to grow your faith. Yes. And so instead of trying to, well, God, why? What mm -hmm. is happening and how can I get out of it? Uh, just in that moment, say, okay, God, mm -hmm. this is my first time. What, yeah. do, what am I trying to learn here? Mm -hmm. And so it's, a, it's a, the progressive sanctification that I was talking about on Sunday I think is that continues. Up. I think it's still happening yes, in your life, right? Yes, absolutely. You never <laughs> arrive. You arrive when he calls you and you're in heaven. Then you won't be down here to know that you arrived. Yeah. You'll be up there. Yeah. You see? So you, <laughs> you, you, you don't do that. It's, it's, um, it's a great relief if you truly believe that you know, have and know the person who can carry you through this mm. life. It's a, it's, 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 there's nothing on your shoulders. Now, that doesn't mean the world doesn't throw things at you. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean that sometimes you act foolish, that, meaning myself, that mm -hmm. I act foolish. Mm -hmm. But I have a God who is willing to forgive me. Yeah. I have a God that I can go to. And I guarantee you, you don't make the same mistake time after time after time. Because that punishment, that discipline gets a little harder each time, you mm -hmm. see. And, and you will find yourself 
in a bad way. Most people don't like to be hurt in any right. kind of way, whether you're talking about physically, financially, mentally, they don't want to be hurt. That's right. And so you, you learn that the Lord means business. And if mm-hmm. he says do, you might as well get on with doing it. <laughs> and if he says stop, <laughs> then stop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so the degrees from the same college, all the way up to master's degrees and PhDs. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, what profession? What are we doing? Like what, are, what all these years, what were you doing? Oh, my gracious. Many uh, things? Uh, yeah. I was... Um, when I first started out, my little 16-year-old job <laughs> uh, was uh, sewing. Because okay. when you're from a large family, now this one sews, and she does all kinds of crafts. She thinks I don't know it, yeah. And she crochets. <laughs> oh, and she oh yeah, yeah, she crochets yeah. nice sweaters. Yes, like all yes. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. see, you, you don't have to talk a lot. If you have eyes and ears, you can hear and see a lot. You <laughs> know what I mean? Uh, so at any rate, and you, you know what skills people have, and yes. eventually the Lord will use them. But uh, my first job was a four, job for the 4-H. And I was sewing. I was sewing instructor, and uh, at 16. And I remember going to school with some material, with and a million lining was just coming out okay. at the store. And so um, everybody was making aprons, and I bought my lining and some wool. And and her name was Miss Prunette, was the teacher. Miss <laughs> Prunette said, Esther, what is that? I said, My mama said I had to make my coat, and you know we're in a coat. Yeah. <laughs> 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 She looked at me, we're making aprons. <laughs> My mama said I had to make a coat, <laughs> you know. Right. And she didn't realize that, you know, <laughs> my mother, grandmother, and everybody, they could sew, yeah. you know. So we got the coat done, you know. <laughs> and uh, But uh, that was my very first job teaching other children okay. how, to, how to sew. And then uh, I've had jobs as cashiers in grocery stores, and people get mad and break a jar or a gallon of vinegar over it oh. and I, I've, I've been in stores where uh, this this lady was going with that man's husband or the wife or something <laughs> and they were worse. shooting guns and I'm under the register you know oh, I but guess. I needed to go to school I had to make some money yeah. you know so yeah. you just kept on doing what you had to do uh, so now you I said d- you got your degree from the same school did you say the name of the school oh I'm sorry the University of Buffalo okay mm-hmm, the University okay. of Buffalo okay. yes and um I've had, uh, you know, cashier jobs, all kinds of store jobs. And then I was uh, director of the cerebral palsy clinic for many years. Okay. Uh, and that was very interesting because you could do your speech. I started out as a speech therapist there mm-hmm. and then worked my way up and uh, did that for years. And then I went on, I, I taught at colleges. And I liked the college work and everything, but I kept looking, and I didn't see too many people who looked like me in class. Mm. And so I said, what, what, what? So then I said, well, let me go back down. So Mm -hmm. I went to the public school system Mm -hmm. and got a job there Mm -hmm. as the uh, human resources director. So I said, well, actually, the first job I got there was affirmative action officer slash support staff trainer. Okay. So I said, well, the foot's in the door. Yeah, you go. You know, I'll get in there. Yeah. And so I did that for a while, and then as things opened and I applied for them. So when I got to the human resources part, um, it gave me the opportunity to help make some laws and to encourage the children. And I developed a program called Grow Your Own, where you would take like a PSA worker, uh, because you had to have a 40 degree to Mm -hmm. do that, and then encourage them to go back to school to be teachers. So now I had a pool of minority students that I could say to the board, oh, here they are, Oh yeah. you know, and... um, Okay. Yeah. That's a, so that passion, like from the going to school, oh yeah, was all yeah. the way through. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. this was early thirties, mid late twenties yeah. by this time. Like oh, who knows age? I mean, I don't remember. What <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to yeah. put together the time. Yeah. Well, that's, pro- we were that's in probably that's probably where. Yeah, that's probably where. Oh, I don't know where we were in the world because I, you know, you know, I have a hard time keeping up with the world. <laughs> you know, I I know it's gonna end, and I know there's floods and wars and you know all that stuff all and everything. Right yeah, yeah, and I. I, uh, I I say, see, you know, God <laughs> told you, you know, <laughs> and you minister to who you can minister to that That's the right. Lord brings in front of your path. But yeah, I know some uh, I know some believers who worry about the world. I'm not. I, mm-mm, yeah, mm-mm. I, 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 I sometimes feel naive to things of the world because I'm the same with you. I don't yeah, I don't yeah. pay attention to it. Uh, yeah, and I yeah I agree. And you're with you. still living. Still living. Yeah, you're living all right. Good too. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Why <laughs> cumber your mind with stuff that you <laughs> can't change? Absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's a. I, I, love, I didn't know that part. I didn't know that you had worked with the students trying to. Oh inf- yes. I didn't know that part of the story. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Very yes. nice. Mm-hmm. And then you retired from your last thing you did was F- was in education. education. I was you know the. 
human resources director at okay. that point in time. And okay. You can, you know, make rules and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Awesome. So, awesome. yeah. And, and we were unique in that there were, I think, six six unions that we had because in New York you know everything's a union yeah you have to negotiate mm -hmm. so it, that was I enjoyed it yeah mm -hmm, I enjoyed so it. when you moved to Georgia did life seem slower life mm. seemed different yeah. I'm living in Georgia now yeah I'm not gonna say it was slower it was different yeah it yeah. was different. it just seems like New York is so fast-paced even when we were around Niagara Falls mm -hmm. and different things uh, it was just so everything is so fast-paced and when I went a couple of months ago, well, now it's a long, a lot of months ago. Mm -hmm. But my brother went. It was just so busy, and you know, mm -hmm. Georgia just seems a lot more. It, yeah, it's it's a different pace. It, that's really what it is. Yeah. And because of that, um, I never sought a teaching position down here, um, I, because I knew I'd be fired. <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> expectations may be perceive differently mm -hmm. you know that this, mm -hmm. this the intent is still there mm -hmm. but so it's easier just to tutor you know you, you got gotcha. that way mm -hmm. awesome um so how did how did faith play into uh, uh, from that freshman year of college through all these degrees and this passion for students and going through the school system all this influence you had mm -hmm. uh, your faith and all that i mean well I, I know the answer but yeah the 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 i think again the answer is I could only do what he was directing me to do. Mm -hmm. So if it was, well, not if, when it was successful, the credit went back to him. Mm -hmm. uh, so I could tell students, you know, that, you know, you need to know the Lord. The Lord is the one who helps you. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can go to the remediation classes, you can do such and such and such, but your life has to have the Lord in it. Mm -hmm. You have to know this person. And it, you can't be ashamed to introduce and to tell people that you know the Lord. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not just talking children. I'm talking about fellow staff members, too. Mm. Uh, I've had some incidences where um, someone would try to use the Lord, well, they would use the Lord's name in vain, and you have to call them on it. Oh, yeah. And uh, when you do, they have a respect for you, and uh, they know that the God that you're serving means something to you. Now, it might not mean, but they begin to, you know, mm -hmm change a little bit yeah i think uh what i've learned about you and know about you is that you are uh firm in your beliefs and not afraid to yeah. voice your opinion mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. certain things mm -hmm. I've, we've told on the podcast before about uh i've been called out by you before yeah. and it, it was good yeah. call out that was like <laughs> a growing moment that i for like you know it was a moment in my life where i was like you know what? She's 100% right. Like, I'm not right. And it was like, it made me start looking around as I do different things now and not look for, because the thing we had, uh, we were talking about was uh, no one being baptized for that year. I don't remember if it was mm -hmm. 2020 or mm -hmm. 2021 mm -hmm. and uh, being saved that year. Yes, I said, that's no what you one's said. You're not saved. Saved. Yeah. I said, we got to pray for it and we got to make sure we're evangelizing. And you're like, how do you know that? And I'm like, well, no one was baptized. And you're like, and? That doesn't save you? And yeah. I was like, you're you know what that's right and so now uh, a lot of the things I do uh, I'm, I'm trying to get that mindset that you are so clearly explaining I'm offering what God has already given me and God yes. has offered to you yes do with it what you may mm -hmm. and just step away that's right <laughs> you we, he, he, he does not have an application off for co-gods yes. you know or, you know it, it just doesn't happen that way but mm. if we live our life so I have a sister who uh, wants um, uh, was she's a uh, this one this particular sister is a pharmacist and she was there was a fellow pharmacist and you know he uh, and so he decided that he was going to tell her that he liked her and uh, she looked at him and she said no you, you don't <laughs> like me you like the Christ in me yeah. <laughs> I thought wow that's well. a movie you know <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> but when and this was years ago, I mean, because she was in pharmacy school when this happened, uh, and I thought, boy, to be able to say that, mm -hmm. you know, that concept that no, no, mm -hmm. you, you, you don't, I mean, you, you like the Christ in me, mm -hmm. uh, shows that you have that deep faith yeah. in God and that you can see what He's doing and you're letting Him work out Himself in mm -hmm. you. Yeah. yeah, Amen. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy's the one word commenter tonight. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. I mean, uh, I, I do have a question. Mm -hmm. Oh. I mean, it's it's rare we, we get to like sit and have a chat because 
you know, life. But mm -hmm. um, so I'll use this opportunity to just ask mm -hmm. you some questions because why not, right? <laughs> right. Um, but uh, I know, like, at, at Mount Zion here, we mm -hmm. have a pretty unique, um, like, we have so many different generations of people that go here, very diverse. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you, you say you like, you love people, you love talking, you love communicating. Um, any advice or words of wisdom to on how to bridge the gap between those generations? I think you start with what is not the gap. If we all say that we love the Lord, mm -hmm. you understand, then that's where we started from. Now, I cannot bebop with the little kids. I, I, I know a little shark or what, what's the ba shark song? Baby shark. Yeah, baby <laughs> shark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I don't even know. It yet. And, and as we uh, age, because I talk to some seniors in this church here, too, and I say, well, we can't do everything that we did in the past, but as you age, you don't need to do. I, mm -hmm. You know, I've done, since I've been here, five peach tree races. I don't have to do the peach tree again. I did it. It was <laughs> nice and everything else, but I can still walk. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. um, and so when you talk about bridging the gap, sometimes it's hard for us to understand, okay, I'm 30, and I'm trying to reach Esther, who's 77, but there's a gap. Well, there is no gap if we start with the word, you know. Well, how do you, when do you do your Bible study? Well, would you pray for me for this? We're just little things, mm -hmm. you understand? We're not trying to hang out, you know. And, you know, um, It will develop into that, as you mature, you preach sometimes on that three strand cord, mm -hmm. as well, according to the word, it's never broken. Mm -hmm. Do you realize if we took a senior, a middle aged person, and a teenager, how you'd have that growth? Mm. You know, it, it, it would do that way. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, and I'm not talking about just moms, I'm talking about in life in general. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, seniors are here, young folk are here, and you know, mm -hmm. and so we, we forget that cord, you know, mm -hmm. but focus on the things and bridge. On the things that you can do now like um, I can't play pickleboard ball but when I get back to being able to come out I can go out and support somebody who mm -hmm. plays it you see what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say you have just as much fun from the bleachers as you would have watching me fall on the pickleboard <laughs> court you know so I saw that happened to somebody yeah <laughs> oh see there see there yeah I've seen, uh, you've been very active you're a bike rider so don't act like you don't have any skills you got oh, athletic but, skills uh, in yeah, there I, yes I, I ride a bike sitting on a seat straight up with the handlebars <laughs> like, I'm not hunched over but I can ride and I can ride you know far yeah but so it, it's those things mm -hmm. that you begin to like I noticed in the Sunday bulletin uh, that there's a hike mm -hmm. coming up on May something mm -hmm. and I said now see I don't know if that's a hike hike you know over <laughs> rocks and on your knees and stuff like that mm -hmm. or if that's a walk hike or what mm -hmm. but those are things that you begin to say to people well, if you can't hike meet us at the picnic table you can set the picnic mm -hmm. table or something mm -hmm. like that you know it, it, the old, old, old lady once, she had a poem. I don't remember what the poem was, but I remember this. Use what you got. Now, that's all I remember. That's all I remember of the poem. Use what you got. That's right. And that's what we're saying. So if we can get out of our mind that there's a gap, no, there's really not a gap. It's just that, well, who she drive too fast or she drive too slow, you know, well, okay, don't drive, you know, <laughs> do something that you, you know, <laughs> you each take your own car and get there. You don't have to worry about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So you say it would start with, like, ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Don't, don't, don't try. Because if one person gets one person, and see, a lot of times, I'm, I'm speaking to myself, because a lot of times I won't approach, if you can believe this, uh, <laughs> others, because I have this personality that, either does one thing. It either scares you to death. <laughs> <laughs> and I never understood why, but my mother said my face tells it all. <laughs> you know, I, it either scares you to death or I don't know what the alternative is. You have yeah. to wait for somebody to say, oh, she's okay. Yeah. You know, she's okay. Yeah. You know. Well, you've never scared me. I don't think that's ever came across. Me there neither. are people that have scared me. You haven't been one of those people. Well, I'm glad of that. To me, you give off um, every since I've ever met you. Uh, for the, how long have we known each other now? Um, well, ever since I came here, really, because so you were you were just going to school and, and yeah, I wrote so a letter. Yeah, to be for around eleven. Eight, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, years. so yes, mm -hmm. we've known each other for thirteen years now. Mm -hmm. uh, you've always came across to me as um, 
is nurturing the right word? Like, you just have a lot to teach me that doesn't know, oh and I need to Lord. know. Like, I need to know. Oh, you make me have to tell you what they called me. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excuse me, family. See, God brought they it. They called me Mother Hen. See? <laughs> and, I, you know... Uh, you know, cook, cook, cook. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I used to, you know, I, uh, it didn't bother me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because that's what you're doing. You're you're trying to gather and then you know mm -hmm. spread out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I would believe that. Yeah. Knowing you now, uh, Mother Hen. Um, so. It, a, a lot of this that you've been talking about uh, goes into what, and what her question goes into also what uh, is p a huge part of the Christian life is just the relationship part, mm -hmm. the uh, community part, being together. Um, you fought harder battles than we're even fighting today. Uh, not only race, but uh, being a female in those mm -hmm. days, I'm sure it was mm -hmm. a lot harder oh, yeah. than yeah. it is today mm -hmm. and, and all these things. So how do we... Um, like, how do we <laughs> keep that passion? I know we keep it on Jesus. I know we preach in the gospel. I know that. Um, but, you know, was it Isaiah that was the weeping that 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 or that was so long Jeremiah mm -hmm. so long and no oh, one yeah, ever yeah, 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 Jeremiah. came and, and mm -hmm. we see people converted. We see people lives changed a lot more than they got to in that day. Just some words that would keep because you you've uh, had to have um, perseverance, longevity mm -hmm. more than I have. And so yeah, I think I understand what you're saying, and I think the, the answer is simply don't assume, don't mm. presume. Either one is wrong, you mm -hmm. see. Um, and we spoke about it a little bit earlier when we said mm. somebody's path is their own path, mm -hmm. you understand? And we do not have a luxury of knowing the past or the future mm. for ourselves, much less for them. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we want to say, um, mm, that I, I can't believe they're doing that or something like mm -hmm. that. We can't do that judging. Just commit that person in that situation and your response to them mm. to the Lord mm -hmm. and realize that God created everybody. Mm -hmm. He knows their path. We don't. Yeah. And we are trying to be co-gods when we try to say, well, that that's, you know, we, we, we don't know. Mm. We don't even know who's saved. That's I right. know if you say you <laughs> saved, you know, I, I can say she's saved, but I, I, I don't know that's that. Right. That's so right. We think we do, but and learn it, it's just it's just such a peace being content. Yeah, and and that's something that you have to learn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the the quote on Friday night that we were, I mean Wednesday night that we went over was uh, godliness plus contentment uh, equals great gain. Great gain. Yeah. Great gain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, when you hear that great gain, like yeah. what what comes to your mind? Great everything. gain. Everything. Everything. Goodness and 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 and, and well being in all situations. Whether it's what you eat, what you wear, what your clothes, what your weight is, where you live, <laughs> great gain in all mm. things. Because you could be a lot worse. You could mm. be in a lot worse situations. There are people who are in worse situations, Facts. and they're waiting for their great gain mm. from the Lord. Where they are might be their great gain, but see, mm. our little our feeble eyes, oh, that's so sad. <laughs> no, it's not so sad, you see. Uh, and so godliness with contentment. Mm -hmm. Godliness without contentment, mm -hmm. you, you got nothing. Mm -hmm. You got nothing. Just and got you, really good behavior. And, and maybe not that. <laughs> and, and with contentment, you don't get that unless you have godliness. Yeah. So you, you got to, yeah. Yeah. Great game. It's, it's plus equals. Yeah. It's math all over again. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I think your testimony and story is a life of great gain from, yeah. from the perseverance from as a child to a teenager to striving through college and as a young mom and all those things. I mean, great mm -hmm. gain mm -hmm. is what yeah. I've witnessed from, from well, afar. Well, praise the Lord. Yeah. I, I, you know, that, that's encouraging because sometimes you wonder, you know, have I lost my mind? You know, but <laughs> I, I think that's the co podcast we had a couple of weeks ago. Was like, are we annoying? Are we the ones that have lost our minds? Like, is no, everyone else the no, same ones? I'm no, like, no, no, you haven't lost not. your mind. No, you haven't. <laughs> I think yeah. it goes well with uh, the scripture that we went over this Sunday. I wanted to read it just so we're all on the same page. But uh, this is what I believe what your testimony your story uh, all these things are evident at some point and it was what uh, Paul was telling the people in Colossae uh, 
saying these are all all these negative things over here get rid of sexual immorality impurity passion de- evil desire all of that he says just get rid of all that because god has offered you this great thing in jesus and he said since he has done that uh, put on uh, you're chosen first of mm-hmm. all he said you're god's mm-hmm. chosen mm-hmm. ones uh, mm-hmm. you're holy and beloved uh, com- put on compassionate hearts kindness humility meekness and patience and he said bearing with one another yes. and over all those things he said uh, that we are to show love that's right uh, just the, mm-hmm. the love part of it and mm-hmm. i think that that's uh, uh not only our testimony together since we've known each other but uh, it was way before i knew you and mm-hmm. it's going to be way after uh, you and i are neither one here yes. that love component mm-hmm. that's going to keep mm-hmm. carrying this gospel forward that we're so mm-hmm. all in tune and, and striving for that's right it's like the passion of all of it that's right and so and what else you got any other thoughts producer any other m- questions for the mother hen <laughs> oh, Lord, I done done it now. <laughs> well, uh, Esther is one of the only people at Mount Zion Baptist Church that know my middle name. Do you know my middle name? Could you rattle it off right now? No, I you can't. No, you said it before. I've said it before, but you when I was telling before. you that she's the only one that knows it, do you remember it? No, yeah, so we have this little thing. Like, when we got to Niagara Falls, all these people were going, Sister Jane this and Sister Jane that and Sister Jane this. And we're like, who is this Jane lady? <laughs> like, we don't even know. Where, that we don't know a Jane. That no, and it was her. Mm-hmm. And so I said, well, who is this? And so Esther Jane is uh, her name. And so I just started calling her Esther Jane just out of fun mm-hmm. because we're close. And so now she calls me Russell Joseph. Mm-hmm. And uh, Joseph. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And yeah. so I just think it's a that's the I just think it's a cool little thing God did with us. Yes. Like our relationship exactly. is cool because of that and other <laughs> things. But I just think that we have that and uh, you know, Sean's daughter calls me Rusty still like when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, God is just like my name for some reason unites me and connects me with people. So very very cool and cute. Mm-hmm. So Miss Esther, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank God. Yeah, and and I would just add, love covers a multitude of sins. Mm. Mm. So just stick with the love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. So uh, we appreciate your time. We'll continue uh, legacy talks. We don't know who's next. Whoever God puts on our heart, and and we go out there. We we do know this. Mount Zion is full of wisdom. There are people here that have walked with the Lord for many, Mm -hmm. many years, Mm -hmm. and uh, are the foundation, the shoulders that we're standing on, (laughs) and one day we'll be that. And so we want to gain all that they. uh, Remember the gentleman said the other night we were talking about in Corinthians he said all these things happened as examples so mm-hmm. that you can not make the same mistakes right. <laughs> you know what I mean? so you want to live and you want to learn and so uh, like subscribe all those things uh, again thank you for joining us Miss Esther um, we will pleasure. be back in a couple of weeks with uh, MVBC the podcast I will request this for everyone listening uh, lift up Emmanuel in your prayers his family is going through a difficult time um, and we just ask that, that you would pray for them um, through this time and God has it under control we have no doubts Mm -hmm. and so until next time uh, we meet again stay prayed up